Hello, my darlings. Today I woke up with a very pleasant surprise. My lovely artist Tana Berchan has given me more fan art of you, lovely darlings. Basically, she drew her own darling Sona. <laughs> Here's the pic. I hope you enjoyed just as much as I enjoyed receiving it. Okay, that was a very cheesy line because I'm about to reuse it in like two sentences. Like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Anyways, today I have a Toga X Reader fanfiction. And uh, in a way, it's the continuation of yesterday's story just because I felt like continuing it, more or less. So I hope you enjoy it just as much as I did writing it. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyways, my darlings, I hope you remember that I have a merch store at the Patreon. Both links are down in the description. I would really love it if you could check them out and support me there. Either buy something or donate a dollar every month. Regardless, it doesn't matter. Just whatever. Please, please. I, I need support. Fine. Um. <clears throat> Anyways, uh. If you, however, don't have any money to spare, that is completely understandable and completely fine. That's just how the world is at the moment. Uh, however, if that is the case, uh, please remember to comment something down below, like or dislike the video, and uh, watch the video until the end. This is the best way you can support me if you don't have any money to spare. Uh, also, remember to subscribe, to join my beautiful darling doll army. And if you have any darling sonas you want to share with me, share them in my Discord. I would love to show them off in a video. Now, let's get right into the story. You were cornered, more or less. Darby had given you the wrong number for the LA with the escape route. Maybe on purpose, Maybe not. The guy was on a drunken stupor for a couple of weeks now. You turned the piece of paper around. Was it 691 or 169? While you were in a pinch, you appreciated that both options had the number 69 in them. But you couldn't think about this for too long. A hero was right on your trail. And the wall right in front of you. You gulped and made a split-second decision to turn around. The hero was quickly approaching. He was wearing a pretty cool mask and a black trench coat with a red shirt under it. He stopped about three meters away from you. You will pay for your crimes, unbroken! He barked. Unbroken? Is that what the media called you? You mentally shrugged. All you did was rob a few grocery stores and get involved with the leak. Times were hard after all. Luckily your quirk made you resilient enough to survive any beating. Didn't take away the pain, nonetheless. Look, dude, I appreciate the cool villain name, but, I mean, I never killed someone. How does robbing a few grocery stores make me this high-class target that you need to get your little boyfriend to help to take me down? The hero looked offended, even through the mask. That child isn't my boyfriend! He was with me for training! You shrugged. Do I look like I care? Followed by a smile. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we do it like this? You're going to make me a high-class target tonight, and be the first on my list of people I kill. Never! shouted the hero. He raised his right arm. It was completely covered by a black glove that was having tubes all over it. Something green was being pushed through them. I'm Night Blight! My quirk allows me to turn my own Zalvia into an acidic mist! Well, that explained the weird mask. And the weird tubes. The cloud shot out from his gloved hand. You wondered how bad it would hurt. With the same curiosity that killed the cat, you wandered into the green mist. D Do you have a death wish? Barked Nartblight. And you simply coughed. 
The acid was pretty strong, making your body itchy and your skin seem to sizzle, but it wasn't strong enough to counter your quirk. Upon realizing so, you opted to just rush the hero through the cloud. A fistfight broke out. A fistfight you knew you'd win, thanks to your quirk. A fistfight that was over within minutes. Nightblight was lying on the ground, his mask broken, revealing his pretty young and also pretty face. Green eyes looking straight into yours, blood spouting out of his nose. A smug smile danced across your lips. You know what the best thing about this is? Nightblight didn't say anything, just stared up at you in fear. Your little gas was potent enough to kill any lesser man, but you pressed your boot on his face. Not me. <laughs> Guess what? I bet my girlfriend will hurt me much, much more tonight after she's done with your little... You stomped. Peace! You stomped harder. Oh shit! This time you kicked. Apprentice! The hero coughed up blood. Was he still alive? Killing people was harder than Toga made it look like. You... Uh, you brought to justice, whimpered the hero. Up until now you were only mad that he managed to corner you, but... Saying this word... Justice... Just pissed you off. In a fit of uncomfortable anger, you grabbed the hero by the hair and began to curb stomp the back of his head, turning his skull and brain to mush. After the guy had finally croaked his last breath, you rolled off of him. Outside of satisfaction, the next thing you felt was exhaustion. While this had been fun, you also wished you had a gun. Wait gun? Oh fuck! You exclaimed before fiddling with your pockets. There was it. The gun Korogiri had given you. A cry escaped you. Only use it on heroes and only under threat of you being caught for good, were his words. After all, you were among the few members of the League whose quirk was more defensive. You wanted to cry. Why am I so dumb? You thought. After taking another deep breath, you had enough energy to stand. Giving the limb body next to you one last kick in the face, you left the scene. Kurogiri, my man, my pal, my friend, I'm back! You shouted into the almost empty room of the League's current base. Tonight, almost every member was busy. Shigaraki was off doing supply runs, Spinner was in the basement working on his sword, and Darby, as per usual, was passed out on the couch that stood in the middle of the room, an empty bottle of gin lying on his chest. Toga, Twice, and Mr. Compress were working on a special assignment, with you being the bait they used to fulfill the mission. You hoped they were okay. Ah, you are back. I hope your mission was a success, came Kurgiri's voice from the other end of the area. It would have been a shame if your first real assignment for organization was a failure. A horrible chill ran down your spine. Despite your light-hearted attitude towards everyone in the League, you deeply feared Kurogiri while also respecting him for it. He had an authority no one else had, like a strict father. After regaining your composure, you replied more meekly, I Yes, sir, um, I distracted the hero as expected, the hero instructed the boy to run to HQ, uh, and then I killed the hero because I couldn't find the escape alley. Only now you realize that 
maybe your assignment did fail. You weren't supposed to kill anyone after all. Good, good. <laughs> Chuckled the shadowy man. While it is a disappointing blunder you managed to get lost despite Darby's instructions, to me they were pretty accurate, but who am I to judge? You managed to not get caught. This just increased your value in the league. You gulped. You didn't realize how little you matter to them, still. Now, now. I'm sure the others will return soon. Shall I make a drink for the young murderer? You couldn't see it, but... Kurugiri was smiling. Of course he had given Darby the wrong address to send you to. He was carefully monitoring everything thanks to his quirk. But he also wouldn't have saved you if you would have failed. A notion he would now consider should it happen again after tonight. You nodded. Yeah, sex on the beach, please. Kurugi chuckled. My treat. While you were enjoying your alcohol, the other members of the League of Villains trickled in and out. Shigaraki didn't pay you any mind when he returned with four large bags of groceries. Spinner, who had left his basement workshop to go on the toilet, had congratulated you on your job, but was gone just as fast as he came. And finally, Mr. Compress opened the door, letting Twice and Toga in. The girl immediately squealed in delight upon seeing you. Hubby! She shouted and sprinted towards you. Hey, baby, you said. You were slightly drunk, but not enough to black out. You're drunk again, aren't you? She pouted. Oh, come on, baby. You know I can handle a few drinks. She buried her head into your chest. You had met Toga three weeks ago on a dating site. Originally, you were just another kill to her. Until she had realized that no matter how hard she stabbed and gutted you, you just simply refused to die. Of course, most people would have caught the cops. But you enjoyed her enthusiasm, to the point where you were saying kinky shit while she played in your blood. And somehow, this led to you developing feelings for her. Obviously, Toga developed feelings for people just as quick as they left. But... Due to you not leaving her, both literally and figuratively by dying, she must have grown fond of you. What helped you was that after she got exhausted from her violent outbursts, was how unbelievably adorable she got. You had a thing for clingy girls. Mostly because you were a needy lover yourself. She mumbled something into your chest. What was that? You chuckled. I love you, she sputtered more audibly. You gave a hearty laugh and answered, I love you too, my darling. She squealed. There was no easier way to make Toga squeal than calling her darling. She loved it. You have such a beautiful heartbeat, she said after sitting down next to you her head on your shoulder. You made me want to rip my heart out, sweetheart. She looked into your eyes. Promise? You only replied with a smile. I love you, she whispered. You pecked her on the nose, and she blushed. Hubby, not in front of Kurogiri. You had completely forgotten that others were in the room too. You look towards the shadowy figure. He was off a few meters, talking with twice and compress, probably about the mission, which reminded you. So, how did it go? You asked her with a little bit of excitement in your voice. She grinned from ear to ear and pointed at her blood-stained clothes. Wait, did you seriously not notice that? Thanks to Kurugiri, we grabbed the blonde guy and, uh, he was so much fun to stab, but... 
She paused and gave you puppy eyes. Not as fun as you. A chuckle escaped you and she continued. After he blacked out, Twice took him and threw him in the trash can outside and we called his friends on his phone and of course Deku was the first one to arrive first. Your smile faltered ever so slightly. Deku, your ex? I thought all your exes are dead. She shook her head. No, 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 you didn't listen, she pouted. We fell in love at a summer camp. Well, I did. He was just so cute and like super heroic and even Stainy respected him. We hit it off immediately, but then his friends pushed me away from him. I was so mad. She puffed her cheeks. Deku. You thought before looking back into her wide eyes. Anyways, Deku took away the bleeding sack of rice potatoes and we booked a Twitch queue. She pointed at her clothes. Didn't even have time to change. Her smile turned devious. Wanna watch me? You chuckled. Only if I get to touch too. She still was way too unprepared on your pervy remarks and simply laughed, then chuckled, then laughed again, while blushing like a tomato. Jesus Christ, you took a fucking room! groaned Darby from the couch. No one wants to see that. You scoffed at the patchwork-faced man. Dude, just go back to sleep, seriously. Dobby grumbled. I'll burn you to ashes, he said. <laughs> I'd like to see you try, was your only remark. Darby groaned. He knew your quirk, unbreakable, made it pretty much impossible to kill you. Your bones were too strong to break, and your flesh regenerated too fast. Also, you had a hangover and was really not physically capable to stand up and bother with this. You know what? Just... Shut the fuck up, let me sleep. And with that, he turned around into a more comfortable position on his stomach. And began to silently snore. Once again, though, you thought of this Deku character. And maybe, just maybe, you hoped that the next person you would kill would be him.